Oh. Well, when they figured out how to actually use it, when they first started it, they put their shoe inside the fan. They're like, this thing doesn't work. I'm like, guys, you guys see those pipes? They put the shoes on the pipes. Oh. That works out there. It's like, come on, man. Fenders are like the track that. <laughs> they are teammates who are healthy. Yeah. I guess they're not. I've taught them that hard. Oh, no, that's not there. I think that's right now. It wasn't here. It's not here. Yeah. It's gone. Coach Mason. See, this is the way Jack and David went that one day. I thought this was Sungate. I knew it looked familiar. Yeah, there's some of your boys who want to go. Well, I mean, you don't go the right way. I saw some of your struggle. I didn't see that was too low. It wasn't. Well, I mean, you don't mess with the chapel like that. Wait, what do you mean by that when you say left the chapel? I don't understand. That cross chapel right there. Uh huh. Well, you went straight. And you turn left if you go left. I can't help you if you come down here and you turn left. I would never think that anyone would do that. Because you never run down this way. That's what today. So why would you go somewhere? Wait, oh, oh, you mean left the chapel? Like turn on to where we just came went? Yeah. Oh. At the, I thought you meant in the beginning. No, I was like, what? Yeah. You mean on the way back, turn, like... Yeah, on the way back. Yeah.
It's really not. We <laughs> use much harder longer than the double go. <laughs> Scenic, which is this bridge line right here. That's an 18 mile long run. That hurts. All trail right there. So, I'll show you, but before you actually get to the gate on Gators, you can turn around and you'll see another trail go in that direction. And we call it scenic. And you basically run this big line from the goat one, which is up and down for like seven miles out. Yeah. So what we do is we run goat first, take them down the mountain and go up there. And then shoot off uh, straight for scenic. It's like a 1400 feet elevation. Double I was just happy you know, to try to beat 56 double, but I had a teammate, and he was, he was a little ambitious that day, so he came around in the 54, and he came back around in the 46 30. <laughs> it was an impressive day. Well, yeah, I mean, you're passing 50 twice. Doing two goats and fifty with no break. That's brutal. He he was insane. We never saw him on the second loop. As soon as he finished the first, he just like turned on the jet. And you got under fifty six twice? Oh yeah. Put the big ass rocks on it. This Down this way or pull this? This way. This way. This way. This way. This
Yeah. This is the start? I think it's a minute pile. Oh. This is about where I draw my line. Oh, if they did it doing it. This looks... This looks just as brutal as I remember it. Oh my gosh. So, I'll draw a starting line. Oh. Tomorrow, like right around this area, like in front of the campfire. So that's the same. But, so that was, what, just under 1.2 or so. Those of you tomorrow, the higher mileage crowd that need to do a mile and a half to two miles to feel truly warmed up, you take the right and go down that direction. And um, it might be a little rocky or whatever, but it's relatively flat. And just I would go just out there, turn and come back to the two. Which I would suggest most of you that again are doing like did like this go snow and all that. I, I would suggest two miles. Ladies, anyone from a mile to a mile and a half, I think it'd be fine. If you want to add on a little bit, just go down there for a couple minutes around and come back. So the girls go, we usually do them over there by that fence, but I don't care if you can do them wherever. It's better to do them over there than here because there's a hill. From this point up to the sun gate is approximately 2,000 meters, and it is mostly up. It's just, it's just running up the mountain. You're, you're basically the, the hills that you guys have done for, for goat and goat. You're hitting a lot of that slope in a very short amount of time. So not a whole lot of recovery. It's really up. We're not running it fast. We're just going to get up there today. So don't take any walk breaks. Just get up the thing. Understanding that tomorrow you'll be trying to really try to, you know, boogie up the thing. Pay attention to stuff. There's no real weird turns. There is a spot where you can go right you want to go left, you have to kind of cross over this gate, kind of getting toward the top. And then when you get to the top, you'll fade to the right and you'll see the sun gate. And um, and again, just, we're not trying to kill this thing up, you know, so it wants to go faster than me, that's fine. But um, it's pretty straightforward, but this is going to be our starting point. So again, we'll run over here, do a little extra warm up if you need, drills and whatnot, a couple strides down there. I'm going to leave a little bit ahead of time to get up there so that I can film when you guys come back. And so probably when you guys are doing your drills, I'll leave early and head up and I'll have Coach Michael call me and we'll, um, we'll do the race. And then I'll have your times and I'll have you on video up at the top. We'll all get together and we'll run back down. Today, we're gonna stop at the Sun Gate and we're gonna keep going the next like 0.7 or 0.8, right? About 0.7, 0 0.8 from the gate to the House of Dreams. About a mile. Not quite a mile, it looks under a mile, so about a mile. So we'll go from the Sun Gate back up or up to the House of Dreams, we'll take some pictures, enjoy the view, we'll come back down and we'll do breakfast. Start playing. So nice and um, nice and chill. Hopefully. All right, let's go.
Now there's a sun gate I see. This is the right way. I think it is. Yeah, there's that one curve up that rocky hill. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That little curve with those rocks, that's going to that's going to be bad. I mean, at least it's really short, but like you know what I'm talking about? It's sharply curves right yeah, uphill. It. It's just, yeah. It's the hardest part of this run. And there's some parts that are like really overgrown. I mean, it's not no, a big there's deal. There's but... that one part where you have to turn left at like almost mile one, like 0.9 or something. Like it's overgrown. It's yeah, like it's hard like to see all, the trail. All, you, you just have to turn left because there's nowhere else to go. What do you mean? I don't understand. When you turn left. Like yeah, when we turn yeah. left to go up here. The grass is overgrown. A little before though. Oh, uh, like yeah. Straight like grass is going to your knees and you just got to pass. Yeah, like no, once you make that left turn, you just got to, that's when I'm going to be booking it. As long as my foot doesn't hurt. Hmm? The left turn when, like, you come up this part. Oh, yeah. Then you see we made a left. Like, you could go straight down or you could go right and we made a left. Yeah. That part. Because that's got to be, like, what, like, 80% of the way there? Like, at least, maybe more. Because after there, it's not that steep, I feel like. In fact, there's a good amount of parts that aren't that steep. Like the beginning is, the very start is very steep, but then it, it, it settles down. But like it's not like yeah, it's not like just like this the whole time. It's, it's like a little bit uphill and then steeper, and then a little bit. It's just gradually uphill. I mean, it still sucks. When you run that fast, it kind of hurts. I thought. Yeah. But hey, it's only two thousand meters. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. That's like under a mile and a half. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's like a mile and like what? Quarter. Mile and two, 1.2. Yeah, a mile and a quarter almost. Bro, is he good or is he trolling? He just hobbled over the line. At least no one's going to get lost. It's impossible. If you get lost, you're just... I'm just trying to go honestly like faster than last year, like maybe like 950. 
get it faster. I run like kind of fast. Do you? Yeah. Oh my god. But like, I'm trying to go faster. Like, you know, I usually use them. Hey, Katie might not want to do this. I can do that. I got something on my hip yesterday. You know how like, coaches get on one knee and lean forward? Yeah. I started leaning forward and this part of my hip is immediately locked up. Oh. I, I, I can't even get into the stretch because my this part of my hip right here just happens to me all the time. I felt tight and then I felt locked and I was like, okay. How do you fix it? I do a lot of stretching and I warm my, I get myself sweaty to make it easier on, to, it's a ball and joint socket or ball and so, whatever it's called. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, I have a lot of stretches for I could show you, but like this one is good. If I'm really warmed up and I go, you lift your this side off the ground you turn this you have okay i'm not gonna explain stuff but you have this like a little bit more forward than this one this one you turn like this and then you lean into it like this but you have to be really warm like before races if i do that and that i always get the huge, the big pops i need to loosen up my hips but before that i'll do a lot of other stretching to get it loose and i'll run to warm up like yeah, I do like pigeon pose on the ground. Yeah, that helps. Do, my, my and then, longer. yeah, well, you can do standing up too. I go like this, like that. I did that before the run and cracked both of them, which was exactly what I needed. Like I just popped it right now. No and then, I and then I can always test my hip flexor range of motion by just going like this. And if I can go all the way without any tension, then that means my hips are loose. Well, how do you do no that? No matter what I do, I can never pop my hips. Like, like I'll go to sleep at night. And I'm yeah, like, well, I, I can show you more when I uh, at. The, the dorm where, where we have the floor. When we get back down, he's gonna but I know a lot about stretching because I had hip, tight hip flexors for years and didn't realize it was holding me back. I only realized that like this year, to be honest. Like I was so focused on stretching a lot of other muscles in my legs, I wasn't focused on my hips. And you need your hip flexors to be loose to lift your leg up high. So, yeah. I just was resting. No, we're just waiting for the girls and so. But Jack, if you're asking about standing, like you have to have decent balance, but you can go like this and push this back. Oh, okay. I mean, you can also go like this. Oh, okay. Like if you go like this, this I can get it to pop a lot, but like you gotta be careful. I farted numerous times in the room. No, I tried to fart and I almost shit. And you can just like practice, like go like this. Or like over here, cause like I get really tight in posterior hip right here, and glutes get really tight. Like it's tight right now. It always is. Oh, I just felt it. Oh, yeah. My turn. You can also like when you're doing leg swings, you can go like this. You can go out this way, out this way, up like this to stretch. If you can go up high, that means your hip flexors are loose and it's good. Like that's the ultimate test because like usually mine are really tight but if before a race i can kick this up just as high as this one and it's like just really loose then that that's good that means i'm ready to roll you you can still run without being perfectly loose but like before a race definitely want to be loose no, it's not like about five kids, like 2,600. No, no, actually. So, what you just did from where he paused first to here, through the gate, um, uh, focused on gate balance. Again, it's approximately 2,000 meters. The idea is that it's supposed to approximate where you could run for a full two miles right now. Well, it's an exact science, but it's just one of those kind of ideas. Uh, no real trouble spots. I know that you noticed when you were coming up that there was like kind of a beaten up path you can go right, but when you go left, you got to go around that gate. You know what I'm talking about? You have to run around that small gate. When you get around that small gate, it's about 400 meters to the finish, give or take, you know. So kind of picture is kind of like the last lap on the track once you pass that gate. So it's still up, and um, as uh, Bryson said, you know, it's like that's going to be one of the most miserable 400 meters of your life, but it's 400 meters. So if you can mentally think when you pass that small gate and go around it that it's about a lap on the track to the sun gate, it might give you that motivation to just kind of find whatever you've got left 
and make it through. Because I want that to be race effort tomorrow. You're, you're challenging yourself. They call it the Sunday challenge for a reason. You're trying to boogie up this thing. Today, we're going to keep going up where these other teams are going. Starting with Party at the House of Dreams. We're going to keep going um, approximately a mile, maybe just a touch under, but about a mile from the Sungate up to the House of Dreams. We'll get up there, we'll hang out. There's a water fountain, we'll take pictures. The view's usually really pretty. It was a little cloudier today, but it looks pretty clear. And so we'll hang out up there for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. And probably by the time it's about 7.30, we'll have to trot back down and, you know, make it for breakfast. So we'll take a good 15 or 20 minute breather up there, kind of enjoy the scenery, look at the views and all that stuff, and we'll, we'll go from there. Most of this is gonna be kind of like this rocky gravel. I think there's a bathroom up there, a porta potty, if you need it. So, but. Yeah, there's a board Yep. So, um, anyway, alright, let's, uh, let's continue on. Again, don't have to be fast, just keep running through the lake. Nice and chill. 2.5 right now. Yeah, that's good.
designed by Harry Carlson of Boston. The House of Dreams was built by students in 1922 as a gift to mark the Barry. The Barry Alumni Association proposed to the Board of Trustees in 1921 that a campaign be launched to raise $20,000 for the construction of a building on top of Lavender Mountain in celebration of the 20th anniversary of, of the founding of the school. Contributions for the project came from alumni as well as from Emily Vanderbilt, Hammond, and friends. Hey, I've been to Vanderbilt University in Tennessee, Nashville. All the construction materials were cut or quarried from the mountain by the students. The students also made the furniture for the house. The house was to serve as a retreat for Martha Berry. Although she rarely spent the night here, she would often bring guests to the mountaintop retreat. The garden was designed by landscape architect Robert Cridlin, who also designed the gardens at Oak Hill and the grounds of the four buildings on the lower campus. Terraces for fruit trees were added by Martha Berry on both the north and south sides of the hilltop just below the formal garden. Marker made possible by the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution. The stone tower at the House of Dreams was built in 1928 to house the water tank for the house at almost 14, 1,400 feet above sea level. The tower offers superb views of the Berry campus to the south. On clear days, Lookout Mountain near Chattanooga, Tennessee can be seen from the north side of the tower. Look at that, that is beautiful. Is that a river, a canal? You can see farmland. Wow, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Picturesque. Would make a great thumbnail. Wow. I'm gonna sit right here. It's just beautiful. Get every angle. The sky. That's beautiful. All of them are over there getting water. Is that the south or the north? That's the south, right? I I'm not sure. I don't have I don't have our bearing straight right now. I see a river down there. Oh, it's south. That's what I thought. So that in the distance, that's Tennessee? Look at the top of the I mean wait, sorry, Tennessee is north. What am I saying? That's south? What mountain range is that? Oh. There's, there's like a, a compass at the top of the... Wait, if that's... Uh, wait, so is that the Barry campus right there? Uh, See that big, long, wide? What is I that? Think, like down there below the trees. Is, oh. Where there's a lot of... Trees. I see farmland. And I see what looks like a silo or a water tower really far out there. Or two of them. Yeah. There's a bunch of gnats right here. Something. I want to go check out the view from the other side. I could see. I saw something when I was over there. Yeah, I'll look behind you for a second.
That is beautiful. Point down, left, right, up. That's a taller mountain range. That's gotta be north right there. Yeah, that's gotta be north. Like the Alps, gotta be over there somewhere. Be so cool to hike some of those mountains. Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina. It's beautiful, beautiful. Just gonna make sure I get all the angles. It's beautiful. There's the house, right there. Chimney, trees. I don't know if this is poop I'm seeing on the ground. Looks like poop. Bottom of my left foot is really hurting again. I need to put in that I was gonna put it in today, and then ironically enough, it starts hurting a lot today. Probably because I ran so much yesterday. And I ran barefoot, so. Bottom of my foot near my toes is hurting again. Look all the way up the tower, all the way down. And another view of this mountain range back here. I don't know what those mountains are. I really don't. But it's a beautiful view, I know that. Picturesque view. Hmm. Arlene Bowen Dobson, a Barry student and special friend of Martha Barry. Bike trail down there. Something's over here. Some building. Do you want to enter faculty and staff only? There you have it. Got another view of the tower. It's a beautiful, cloudy day. It's not hot. Or at least it doesn't feel hot. We got a swing set here on this tree. Very nice. Oh. 
Oh my god. Did you ever walk Steven? No, I didn't know what my leg is. Yeah, why? The problem is that. Oh, and then like, and then she'll buy you? And she go up again? Coach G, if you want a team photo in front of there, let me know. Yeah, I can yeah, just we'll stand here and def yeah, we'll definitely and uh, team pick. Cause like it's recording, so I can stop it at any frame and get any photo you want. Yeah, I mean, I get, you know, I'll use yeah. I don't usually get in the team one. It's like it gets in there, but but yeah, get a get a team photo. Hey, it's your team pick over by that uh, those two chairs over there. Can we take it? Oh, sure. Yeah, get in the get in the picture there, Coach. You sure? Yeah. Cool. I was I was gonna, I was gonna take it if you want. Bryce is our escort up here. Okay. And we'll take a selfie. I'll text it to your mom because I want to make sure you continue to be well documented. Come here. It's hard for you. Hang on another five or so minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Back down. Who's the rest of our team? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You heard? You got it, Oh, my ankle. Have you noticed anybody missing? Seven. Eight. Why am I counting eight? Jack. Jack. Oh, yeah, should the girls play? Oh, they're Jack! 
Run. Actually, what? What's the tall people and disappearing all of a sudden? Like, I'm sorry, but so make it make are sense. we all? Yeah, right. yeah whatever. Wow. That's all going on here. Yeah. You want to even it out? Everybody smile, looking like each other. Got him. Sweet. Thanks, man. We're gonna do this next year. I'm graduating. Alright, alright. Hey, pay the coaches. What? Say bones? I mean, which one? I mean, I don't know. I was showing a few things. Uh, let me put this back on for No, I got it. Just have to get this strap. It's really easy. It's just two straps. One. And two. You know, I'm probably gonna have to take those pictures. I think this wasn't helping with the uh, with the chafing too. But it doesn't. It's. I think it's better today. Does it look better? Yeah, it looks better. Yeah. No. So this is better today. All right. So, what were you saying? No, but right after that, what were you saying? Oh, whatever. But first, you can test your flexibility with it right now. You just go lift your leg up like this, and then push down right here. But like, don't hurt. If it hurts your knee, that's bad. Like, don't be careful. Well, you want to push this part, kind of like on the inside of your thigh. I don't have good balance on my left leg because my ankle is really messed up. I have an ankle injury. No, you don't have to push hard. You just like you. You can kind of do it it's on its own. It's just if it needs a push, you can give it a little push. You don't have to keep it straight like that. Like you kind of want to angle. Like imagine you're sitting cross-legged. You can do it sitting down too, like this. Like see if you. If you sit down and you're just immediately like this, you know your hip flexors are really tight. If you can't, yeah, no, that makes sense. Like, it shouldn't be like perfectly straight like this, like because that's that's gonna put a lot of uh, on your your joint with your knee. That's gonna put a lot of tension on it. Like that's not good. Could it make your knee inflamed? What happened? Oh, but but it should be like. Not like this. But yeah, you can push down here to give it if you need a little bit of a push. But just don't hurt yourself. And you can like hold it a little bit or you can like go back and forth. And test your other one. Because they should be even, ideally. My left one locks up all the time. Like it's a little bit locked up right now. I can already tell. I mean, not everything's going to be ideal, but ideally you shouldn't feel any, like, push, like, any resistance when you go like this. Like, you shouldn't be able, like, you shouldn't be like a, what are those freaks at the circus that can, like, just turn anything, like, a contortionist? You don't have to be like that, but you shouldn't feel, like, a lot of resistance when you're, when you're doing stuff like this. Otherwise, it just means you got to stretch and massage more. Can I roll out the side of my head? Oh, like <laughs> yeah. Ready? No. I... I don't do that enough. You definitely can do that. I can do. You can do it lying down, or if you have a stick like me, you can do it kind of standing up. Yeah, you can roll the IT band too. You can get on the. I mean, if it if your IT band has been tight for a while, it's gonna hurt when you like put your whole body weight on the roller. So you gotta like support yourself with your hands to so like you ease into it. You don't want to just like throw your full body weight onto it and just hammer it, cause yeah, then it might be like really sore the next day. But, um, and you can sit on it. Like, that's the good thing. Like, you can kind of turn to the different parts. Like, I, I need to roll here more than anything. Right here, like, it, it hurts really bad right now. I mean, not really bad, but, like, there's definitely pain when I push it. It's very tender. So, like, you can roll, you can roll that, put, put it on the roller. Or you can, you can bend your leg up like this and put it on the roller also. Because then, then, like, it's firing, so it hits... 
it hits it, uh, the muscle differently than if it was just relaxed. So you can do both, and then you can turn on your side, like you said. Uh, yeah. And then obviously, just like the stuff you were doing yesterday, like you can kind of you can kind of play around and just see all the different angles. Like, oh, like I saw you doing this yesterday, lying down. This is really good if you. Cause like this will hit two different areas, it, like it'll it'll, yeah. Well, it it hits the outside of your leg right here, but then if you go all the way, then it comes all the way down here to your butt. Yeah, it's really good, but yeah, no problem. All right, Pete, take taking the view one more time. We're gonna start jogging back down. Uh, Gotta get back down there by about eight o'clock for breakfast. We are not gonna correct. jog down the same way we came back. We're gonna keep going on the gravel road. If you know like where we stopped at the Sun Gate. Just keep following the gravel road all the way down. You know what I'm talking about? Like, don't go down the sun gate. Just follow the gravel road. Don't have to be fast. If you're paying attention, you'll notice, I don't know how far down, but if you take a look at the right, there's a trail cut through. That's snow and goat merging onto uh, the gravel. So it'll look familiar, hopefully, for you guys that have done, um, that did snow and goat. You'll see it coming from the right. But we're just going to take the gravel road all the way down. Not fast, just nice and chill. And we'll get down there and we'll go get some breakfast. What do you mean? So this gravel road leads to the gravel road where snow and goat end? No, this gravel oh. road leads to where, like, you know how when you take a right on snow and goat on that gravel road, this is the gravel road. Take a right on snow and like goat. When you're doing snow and goat, when you get huh? to, there's a big right turn that you have to run down the hill. This is the hill. That's what I'm saying. So, it's not like, where it ends, because you still have two miles to go. Yeah, not ends. I meant, like, when the where the trail ends. When the trail goes into so, the gravel road. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we just come down from the top of it and then go out. Yep. Okay. And so then the, the last, That's like, cool. whatever, two miles of this run. Is That'd be, how far is it from the top to the bottom of that gravel road? That'd be interesting to see, like, well, how a, fast. I know hmm? that a lot of time it. It's about, a, it's about two miles for go, I think. I think is what Bryce said. Yeah. But, it's, so it's longer from the top of here all the way to the bottom? You mean from here? Yeah, from the top of the gravel road all the way to the bottom. Uh, that's a Bryce question. I'm not sure. Bryce might know. Huh? So the bottom, so, like, where we started the run, you mean? Or Just, like... Like, what do you mean bottom? The bottom being, like, when you go to the road, you get off the gravel when you go to the road, like the gate. Well, I'm just, I'm just trying to get out of their way. Oh, there's nobody. Where's the closest stairs? Uh, you can go that way. I mean, you can jump. Oh, I, just, I was trying. I just didn't want to. Okay, I just didn't want to interrupt their picture. Smaller Bryce. Keeper. I got a piece of paper that says I don't have to listen to you no more. <laughs> Do you know how far it is from approximately from either here or the sun gate to where the gravel meets the road at the bottom of goat? From here? It's like uh two point eight. Two point eight? Yeah. That'd be interesting to see like how fast somebody could run. It's like all downhill the whole way, right? Um from I mean, here downhill to the running is really yeah. destructive on the body. So like No, I'm just saying it'd be interesting to see what somebody could like yeah. like do an all out mile in so we had down a, there or something. I had a heart attack my freshman year and one of my oh, teammates man. ran down to get some help. And so he didn't run just to the bottom but like to where we park and stuff. And mm -hmm. we were we were past the sun gate but not by much on the way down and he did it in nine minutes. So I guess he's got the record because he was- Wait, from the sun gate to the bottom of little, goat, nine yeah, minutes? Oh, not quite to the bottom. Well, like, a little past these, the sun gate. Oh, I but see. he went past yeah. the bottom all the way to the cinders track. In nine minutes from Yeah, he was rolling, he was, he was moving. He was like one of the fastest guys on the team at the time. And well, he thought his teammate just died. So he was, he was kind of moving. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah. yeah, I hope you, you fully recovered from all that. Uh, kind of. I have a heart condition. All right, so y'all get up the stairs. How long ago was that? Uh, well, I'm a senior now, so about three ish years ago. Man. So I was telling him. Well, that's a crazy run comeback down. story. We're running down. We get past the sun gate, but not by much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you even need to ask that question, coach? This would be the easiest run you do all week. 
I mean, that's the appropriate response, I think. And it was like a kid in training, so like it was a senior trainer, yeah. like fumbling for their stuff. Oh, yeah. It was like crap. Like every book you've ever read. It's yeah. going through your mind. Nerve wracking. How did you do CPR again? <laughs> like, you know, you're. When they were like, where is he? I can help him. And he was like, he's like, come on, where are you to get to him? <laughs>
Thank you, you too. This is where goat and snow come off. I think. Is it? Or is it further down?
Beautiful.
Oof. Just ignore that. Beautiful buildings. bridge and the pond Gonna go to the cinders track and run till they get back. And get off the road since my foot's hurting. My quad is tight. Tibia, calves go numb. Her in foot. No, they're coming. I'm gonna just run on the center track till they come back.
didn't work out. <laughs>